the storm raged on, and from within the house, an old man sat quiet and waiting for what he did not know, for how long he did not care, but he waited patiently, because tonight was the night it would all happen, and he knew it from the very depths of his soul. He took a sip of whiskey from the lowball glass which sat next to his armchair. The wind blew stronger, the rain fell harder, and the thunder echoed a name which must not be spoken aloud. But the old man heard it and knew it to be true. The radio flickered on. One, one, zero, six, four, zero. He recognized those one, numbers, one, but could not remember zero, from where. Six, four, thunder zero, struck again and lightning illuminated the wall of framed pictures which he wished wasn't there. The first picture of him and his late wife, whom life without was a painful reminder of the happiness that only existed in memory. The second picture was that of his son in military uniform. Now a grown man, he lived in a country far away with no intention of returning. The third picture portrayed his daughter as a little girl. Now a woman with a family of her own. She had no time for the old man. Ironically, with time being his only companion, he took another sip. Lightning flashed again, and he felt a presence from outside. For the first time in decades, he felt noticed. He felt seen. Looking out the window, across the street and into seemingly endless rows of corn, the old man could make out a faintly figure. At first unsure of what he was seeing, doubt became absolved at the sight of a long scythe which glimmered in the moonlight. The old man now knew what he waited for as fear crept in and replaced solace from his thoughts. More wind more rain, more whiskey from the glass upon his lips. The door opened slowly, and footsteps made their way through the house. Midnight fell upon this fateful night, and the old man prepared to stare death in the face. The reaper's scythe dragged across the hardwood floor, louder and louder making its way closer to the old man. One last gulp from the lowball glass, and the footsteps stopped. But not just the footsteps. The clock, the radio, the wind, the rain. The night itself came to a sudden yet peaceful halt. Death took one step closer and stood at the doorway of the living room. Unable to open his eyes, the old man sat shaking, overwhelmed by the thought of gazing upon the last thing he would ever see. But it was time. Slowly opening his eyes toward the floor, his sight approached the doorway, where a pair of muddy boots stood firmly. Next to the boots was a bloody scythe blade, dripping fresh blood onto the floor. The old man looked at the figure in the doorway and stared in unwavering confusion. For the figure before him was not an unworldly being or a ghoulish specter of any kind. It was a man, and not just any man, but one he knew. Further down the road lived another farmer. Although troubled in the mind, never gave anyone problems. He now stood in the doorway, and the old man said, Why are you here? And the farmer replied, Because it's your time. The latest on the investigation and reaction from the family. Um, we, uh, we believe we have recovered the murder weapon, uh, the murder weapon being a 
uh, a scythe, which is a, um, uh, it's a hand tool used to cut tall grass or weeds. Because of the heinous nature of the crime, the prosecuting attorney asked for a five-